Well, appreciate you being here this morning. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to James chapter 4, and we're going to continue this series, probably one more week on that, on, on if you want to win in life, what we have to do. The third aspect of this is whether we like it or not, we have to be willing to fight. I know we don't want to hear that, but that's part of life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Uh, Lord, we praise you as we were praying in the back, Lord, just to know that we can meet, Lord, freely that we took for granted for years, and Father, just being able to have a place to meet, knowing that each and every Sunday that we can worship you freely. Father, as we look to your word today, we know the hearts of all of us, everyone's fighting or dealing with something. We just pray that we would look to you, and as we leave here today, that you would equip us in such a way to know that you're in control, you're the one that wins our battles, and Father, all we have to do is stay close to you, in Jesus' name, amen. James chapter 4 and verse 7, therefore submit to God Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Let me read it again. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. What that is actually showing us there is there is a battle. All of of us are in a battle. And here's what's hard today that we face. We live in a world that is a world full of entertainment. And so, compared to maybe years ago, everybody does whatever they can to have uh, as much free time as we can to do whatever we can do with whatever. And we have forgotten that this life, in many ways, if we want to have joy and peace, there, there is a constant battle going and I, I know this is not popular when we hear that and so forth but there's there's a constant battle that is taking place uh, in all of our lives and we have to know that if it just locks in and say you know what it's just going to be bad there's one verse in the bible <clears throat> that I really have a hard time with I still can't figure it out no matter how many theologians or different people I've read about and, it, and the Apostle Paul is saying, you know, he's finished the course and so forth in life. He says, fight the good fight. I, I don't know any fight that's really good, you know, but he says that and it's, and it's confusing. And the only thing that I can look at in that way is that is the Lord, he picks up for us when we're willing to fight, but we all have to get in that mode that that's going to happen. I never forget story was told to me uh, <clears throat> about fighting for what is right, and we have to always be willing to do that. You can't slack. We've got to know that today. You're in a battle. You know the devil hates what, who you are and what you stand for? Now, we're always going to win if we look to the Lord, but I'm just here to remind you that he's got a trap set for all of us, and he does, we have to be willing to fight for what is right. Years ago, the story was told to me. My father uh, was in uh, was in junior high, and uh, of course, my grandfather, being a pastor, and the church was huge at the time. And and you go back way, way, way back. I don't know how many years ago was that when he was in junior high. But uh, at that time, kids would there would be all types of kids in the class. What I mean by that is. You would actually have kids in the class in regular students that had Down syndrome. And um, again, going way, way back. And so this one kid with Down syndrome kept getting picked on and finally was pushed on and knocked down by another kid. And my my dad picked the other kid up and threw him across across the other side of the desk. And uh, the teacher went over to my dad, and my dad's in seventh grade or eighth grade at the time, and says, you know, your father's a pastor and so forth and so forth, and says, uh, aren't you supposed to turn the other cheek? Isn't that what the Bible says? And 
my dad says, yeah, but the Bible doesn't say what to do after you turn the other cheek. <laughs> I think he got in trouble for that, but, but here's, here's the point. The point is there's something about it. I can't explain it. There's something about when we are willing to fight the good fight and fight for what is right, there's a peace and a joy that you get by knowing that you're doing the right thing. What's so important about that verse is knowing that we always have to, we always have to be willing to know that we've got to fight. And it's so different in this culture today that we want to do everything but that. We were just, we've gotten lazy in many ways. Let, let me read it again. Therefore, submit to God. So if we're going to fight, you're going to lose, I'm going to lose every time. We try to do it on our own every time. You try and figure it out or you throw money at it or you do whatever you can to da, 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 whatever it might be and you lay awake at night, you got to figure it out finally and it goes a different way the next day. Submit to the Lord, your heavenly father, and even though you can't see it, the battle will start to change. Even though you can't see it. Because you and I have been willing to honor the Lord. And what, if we really believe what God's word is saying, he says, well, if you come to me and you have that battle with the devil, he's going to flee from you. Well, let's build on that. Let's look at another verse. The Old Testament there's a great passage in the book of Isaiah, chapter 54 and verse 17. 54, verse 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And it even showing a picture of one of the weapons that hurts us the most. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And it gives that example of slander. You know, all of us have been hurt at some time or another by someone lying about you or someone doing something wrong to you. They're getting away with it. You look like the one that's not, and, and you're thinking, you know what? I, this, I'm trying to fight this, but it looks to everyone else like I'm, I'm the wrong person here. How, how, do we, how do we win that battle? Well, we continue to fight, but God is saying, no, know this, that that weapon that's coming against you is flesh. It's of this world. And God's telling you and me today to know that every tongue which rises against you, so that's the slanders. You, you know, it's hard. All of us are involved in relationships. And in those relationships, sometimes you get hurt. But God is saying, if you are willing to let the truth play out, Eventually, everyone will see it. Now, that might not be the answer that you wanted to hear, but it's the truth. You know, there was a, a victory that, that has just been won, and, and we see the other side, and that's why I wanted to talk about it just for a minute today. That there is a victory that took place in our society this week that, I'll be honest with you, I never thought would happen. And that is that Roe versus Wade has been overturned. And I, you know, we support heavily to, uh, to the pregnancy services here in our local community. I'm going to meet with our elders and we're, we're going to do more to support them more. Because why? Th th that battle that was just one, it, this is just the beginning. You saw on the news the slander that was against all of those that are pro-life. And they're coming hard. And they're coming mean. And they're coming violent. Now, this is what I'm encouraged about 
in the Christian community today. I don't know why for years that we weren't really, kind of, I don't know how to explain, we weren't, we weren't really standing up like we should have. But I see a difference in churches and believers today that they're willing to stand up for what is right. And no matter what someone says or does. Now, I, I didn't know how, quite how to bring this in, but they are getting violent. But I know if someone comes at me and, and is violent, uh, I don't know how to say this, but uh, I, I, it's not going to happen. I, I seriously, I don't know how to say that. I used to do whatever, and there, if someone throws a punch at me, they're going to get one back. I don't know how else to say that, and I don't, I don't. I'm sorry if I offended some of you or whatever. But my point is, I, my point is, as a believer, first and foremost, we do everything that we can to do what is right in God's way. Here's my point with that. That's what they feed on. What we see in the abortion movement that is happening this week, what we see that is taking place, that this battle that we're in, that they fight every way imaginable. The bully doesn't stop till someone comes back at them. Now, what I mean also by that, again, I'm not here to go out and get in a fight. I'm here to just say... I'm here to say that I really do believe that, that I'm so thankful for Christians today are willing to stand up. We're not going to take this anymore. And so knowing that God is with you and is with me, there's a great passage found in the, in the New Testament. And God says, no matter how much they slander you and come against you, there's no weight in it in the end because they know you have the truth. That's right. yeah. One of the first things I do when I talk to people that are uh, un unbelievers or mad at me about that, we start the conversation, is to say, okay, let's, let's just take this stunt from even a, um, a biblical standpoint. I want you to go, have you Googled and done research uh, uh, about a, a baby in a mother's womb and so forth? And, you know, instead of always talking about a mother's right, have you actually done the research? Most people will say no. You know why? Because they don't want to see a heartbeat of a little baby in a mother's womb at six weeks old. They don't want to see that. What we have to know that no, without a doubt, when you are fighting for what is right and for what is truth, there's something to be said about that that I can't explain. I know this, that God honors that. I honestly believe this. I was telling Brent when we were praying back there today. I really do believe that we're starting to see a turn in our nation. And when we see that, God starts to bless again. Do you know that 16 states out of all the states in the United States of America have now passed that, oh, it's crazy. I, I, sometimes I don't even, I read so much, I don't even know what I'm going to say when I get up here. There's so much in the news. But now 16 states have now passed that only women can participate in women's sports. Now, just have to think about that for a minute. But in other words, a man cannot participate in 16 states now in, with, in women's sports. So thankful for that. What we're seeing is that the news is not going to put out there what you need to know. They're not going to tell you the truth. I'm not saying, oh, there's, there is good news out there. Don't get me wrong. There's good journalists and so forth. I'm just saying, for the most part, the, the main news that you watch on the, your television or YouTube or whatever it might be is not really what you need to do. You need to always do the research, if you will, and go down at the beginning or at the end and see who wrote the article is what you need to do. Anyways, I just know that, that we're on God's side with this. And when you're on God's side, no matter what you're battling, no matter what you're facing, I just hear you tell you, I'm just here to remind you that you're going to win. That you're always going to win. That's not me. When, when you're willing to fight, God says, says in his word, we just read as a promise, no weapon formed against you 
will prosper. In other words, it's not going to overtake you. The devil always comes at the flesh. What do we need to know for that? We close today. I'll look at one more verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. We know the devil's weapon always comes at the flesh. God tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. For the weapons of you, you and I, all of us today, of our warfare are not carnal. They're not fleshly, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Remember when David was fighting Goliath? He goes out. He first goes to Saul. And Saul puts all this heavy armor on him, and David can't move. He says, I can't use this. And he throws it off, and he basically goes out there with a T-shirt and a pair of shorts on. And he goes before Goliath, and Goliath's yelling at him like a, little, like a dog. He's gonna ri- I'm going to rip you apart. And remember what David says. He says, I'm not here. I'm, I'm, I haven't battled all these years. He didn't say anything. I'm ready. And, you know, I got all the greatest warriors with me to fight. What he said, you have defied the true and the living God. And I come in the name of of that true and living God. And I so believe that he's with me, I'm already going to tell you up front, I'm going to take your head off. That's that's pretty strong for a teenager saying that to like a 10-foot giant. Could we do that? I don't know. But he gave us that as an example. Because the giants that you and I face today they, they, are, they are spiritual, and the devil comes right in our flesh with it. He weakens us to, that, that we're just, we did this, we did that. God's not with you. He's not aware. He can't do this for you. Look at your past. All those things, the devil comes at you and makes you doubt who you are as a believer so he can weaken you so you won't go further and depend on the true and the living God. Know that the devil always fights in the flesh, God always wins and fights for you and I in the spirit. And there's one thing I always want to drive home with our church family. Live in the spirit. Because the devil is going to do whatever he can when you walk out that door this week to discourage you. Everybody has issues. Everybody has something they're dealing with at work or family or whatever it might be. You know, I was trying, I can't work out like I used to. I went to the gym this week working out. I was so frustrated and, you know, everything's falling apart. And, you know, and these, these young guys in there throwing the weights around anyway. So I'm there and I look over and there's a guy on the, on the seated uh, leg press. Okay, if you don't know what it is, you kind of lay down, you look up like you're laying in, you're in a seat, but you're, you're looking up. Okay, and the, and the weights are stacked on the end. Uh, and as the weights are stacked on the end, you push up with your legs and your feet, and a lot of guys can do a lot of weight with that. And I'm a little frustrated because, I don't know, I'm just walking around in there and turn around and leave. You know, that's about my workout anymore, you know. It's just ridiculous. Anyway, so, so I'm, I mean, it's so frustrating. Anyway, so I'm a little frustrated about it. I'm just being honest with you, you know, a little down about what was me. I can't do anything. And I look over, and there's this guy, and he's on that, on that leg press. And he's pushing quite a bit of weight. And I look again, and he's got one leg. In other words, his other leg is a prosthetic. And he looked young enough, he must have been in in Iraq or in a war or something. He was in incredible shape. (sighs) Lord, forgive me, you know. Wow, I hear this guy everything he's been through and he's in there working out and he's not complaining and he's pushing that 
with not a real leg. With, I mean, one leg real, but the, the other one, I don't even know how he's doing it, but it's a lot of weight. He has chose, I believe, what he did was not only fight, he fought and was fought for our country. And we have the freedom to show up here today because of those men and women. But what it did for me is say, it's all perspective. What you're dealing with right now, what you're fighting right now, if you're willing to fight in the spirit, God will give you the strength on whatever it is that you're dealing with. Because your weapon will never become weak when you're relying on the power of the Holy Spirit. You might, I might, in my spirit, no. In my flesh, yes. We all have those times. But to know if you're willing to rely on whatever you have to fight in this life with, whatever it is, whatever it might be, those that are slandering you or things that you're dealing with or work situations or whatever it might be that you're thinking about right now while I'm bringing this message, whatever it is that you're dealing with, if you are willing to know, if you give it to the Lord and still willing, the Bible says, to done all to stand, many of the wars in the Old Testament were won by the Israelites just showing up. God did the rest. God just wants us to show up every day. I say, Lord, this life is a vapor. It's hard. I don't understand. I'm supposed to enjoy this battle. And if I'm willing to look at it in a way that you want me to look at it, I will defeat the Goliaths in my life because I honor you, the true and the living God. And you will win this battle in a way that I couldn't figure out if I thought about it for 10 years. That's the Jesus we serve. That's why we call him our Lord and Savior. Because he saved us once and for all. And he saves us every day. And if we're willing to believe and to trust on who he is, and we say he's going to fight my battle, I'm going to look to him. And if I do what I ever I can do in this life, Lord, and I can't figure it out, I'm going to come before you, my daily devotion, saying, Lord, give me what I need for this day. You can see it, I can't. Give me the wisdom. Give me the discernment. And if you're willing not to fight in the flesh, but fight that battle in the spirit, God will always, always, always show you a way. And you will be victorious. And what it will do, what it will do it will be is what David did when he was such a great warrior in the Old Testament. When he had his tent and they would put the tent out about a mile from wherever the war was going to take place of the battles with the enemies and all of they that hated the Israelites. And they would go to another battle and they would win another war. He would take something from that war that was unique from the enemy's side, whether it was a sword, whether it was a piece of jewelry, whether it was a gold bar, something that would remind him how God won that battle. And he would hang it in his tent. So for the next battle, it was always going to be different than the last battle. But he remembered, hey, I, I remember how God won that how he won this, how he won that battle. I didn't know how he was going to, this, that, and that's what he wants to do. When you win that battle that you're facing right now, and you will if you rely on Jesus, and when you win, always know to put it somewhere and log it back in there to know, wait a minute, I'm facing something new. I don't know how to deal this, but Lord, I remember how you won the last battle. And if you won it that way, you're going to win this one too. And I honestly believe that's what the Lord is telling us. 
Because this life goes by so fast. As he wants us to enjoy it and have peace in such a way that others will look at your life at the workplace or in family or whoever it is and they'll ask you for the hope that is in you and you'll be able to reach them and lead them to Jesus Christ. Hey, other than our families, that's why we're still here to bring people into heaven. How we rejoice to know, shame on me for not believing enough that God could overturn Roe versus Wade. If he has done that, and those that were on the front lines that were willing to fight for 50 years, can we fight for a couple? And whatever it is, hey, our families, they're sure worth it. And we'll never, ever get on our kids, ever, ever. Let's pray. What is that that you are, want to give up a little bit on? Maybe you already have given up. Or you're facing something that's gone on for I don't know, five years, 10 years, and you're just tired. I just want you to know today, all I've done today through the power of the Holy Spirit is just remind you, with God, all things are possible. And we are more, more, more than conquerors through him. And through the power of the Holy Spirit today, I've just hopefully just reminded you and me, man, we serve a true and a living God, and he's going to come through every time. Maybe not the way we want it. Maybe not the way we thought. But just the way we need it in our life and in our family. If you're watching on, as we have so many now on YouTube or the church app or being live, Facebook, Instagram, it, all out. And you're tired and this battle is not going your way and you're fighting with your flesh. It's not working. I want you to know Jesus came to this earth, had a plan to give you eternal life and then to live by his resurrection power. And all you have to do is I lead you in a prayer. God tells us in his word, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So all you have to do, I'll, I'll pray this prayer. It's God gave us his son to live a perfect life. And if you're willing to believe he died on the cross for your sins, will you pray this prayer with me? Jesus, I believe that you're God's son, his one and only son who lived a perfect life. And Jesus, you shed your blood for me on the cross of Calvary. Lord, I don't understand all this, but right now, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And Jesus, from this day forward, help me to live by your resurrection power. Father, we thank you that you have given us a way for our families, for our future. And when we just feel we cannot do it anymore, you do something that truly is amazing. In our spirit, only the way that you can do it. And we call you our heavenly father. Father, if there is someone here today, even in the midst of us that doesn't know you as their savior through a friend or family member, may they come forward and I can show them this, share with them that same prayer that we pray with those that are watching today. Father, we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name.